So do you want to uh, suspend our meeting and then go to the election board, Commissioner Ames? Yes, yeah. Uh, do you need a motion to recess? No. No? Okay. All right, then we'll uh, open the board of elections and if we'll bring in uh, all concerned, uh, Michael and uh, Representative Diamond. Okay, please unmute. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, all. All right. All right. Uh, we have everyone that uh, that we're expecting. Uh, okay, Michael. Good morning. Good morning, Michael Anderson, Chief Clerk, Voter Registration. Uh, I guess I will um, turn it over to Representative Diamond. Uh, I guess that's why we're here today um, and be happy to answer any questions that the board has or the representative has. Yeah, if I could just uh, preface uh, uh, Representative Diamond's uh, comments and questions with, uh, I, I felt that uh, in the interest of transparency, I think our, our entire Board of Commissioners and also serving as the Board of Elections for Lebanon County, uh, we're interested in, in total transparency. So uh, when uh, Representative Diamond approached me uh, with some concerns that he had, uh, I thought that the, the best way to handle this would be uh, to call a, a meeting of the Board of Elections. So with that said, uh, Representative Diamond, if you wanna go ahead and share your concerns. Thank you so much, commissioners and uh, Michael. Good to see you again. I uh, hope everybody had a happy holidays. So I, I think you're all aware of the analysis that uh, Frank Ryan's team did on the SURE system. And I'm well aware that there are many issues with the SURE system as evidenced by the Auditor General's uh, report of 2019. And we know it's an antiquated system. Um, I fully understand that this is not the way that you folks um, reconcile all the numbers on the county level. So uh, if you're not familiar with what we did or what Frank Ryan's team did, they just took a look at the shore system to count the people who were marked as having voted in the general election and compare that to official results as they were available across the county. And, and the numbers found up, uh, 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 came up with somewhat of a deficit. And uh, I understand that, uh, Michael, you labeled this as comparing apples and oranges. I kind of more consider it as uh, comparing apples to apple tarts, where one tart, one tart requires one apple to make a tart. And, you know, you put them in the oven, you come out and you have a tart. Um, so I understand that there is somewhat of a lagging nature of the sewer system itself in, in regards to the, the actual people who voted. There may be information that is not completely uploaded. It was my understanding at the time that that analysis was done that Lebanon County for the most part had uploaded all its data. Um, but when we, and, and what Frank Ryan's team did was they just took raw county numbers at the whole and compared them to statewide numbers. What I did with the Shore system is I dug down a little deeper into a precinct by precinct level. And uh, on the spreadsheets that I sent you, you can see there, you know, there are, there's, there's deviations in a lot of precincts here, which I consider, well, it's a lagging indicator. And, you know, and I'm not sure, and Michael, you can clarify this, is at this time, are you still, are you removing people who moved out of district? Are you removing people who deceased uh, from the shore system? So I, I can't anticipate that there will be some deviations on these numbers. However, when I look at two particular precincts in Lebanon County, the deviation, I, I, I mean, I, we've had arguments with people who say, well, this is not a great way to analyze, to go directly to election results. And even if you, even if you uh, subscribe to that theory that we shouldn't use this to analyze, at least 
such an analysis would apply evenly across all precincts. Um, so that's what I was looking at here because we had two precincts in Lebanon County, a 31 North and a 32 North uh, that had higher, much higher deviations than the other precincts. So I was curious about that. And I was curious about 32 North in particular, number one, because it's in my legislative district. And because on the morning of the election, I had received several calls uh, from constituents who <clears throat> showed up to vote and they said, well, the person in front of me, their name wasn't in the book and they gave them a ballot anyways. Now, whether they gave them an actual ballot to get scanned or a provisional ballot, I'm not aware of that. But I got several calls that day and look, Every election day, uh, because I'm an elected official, I get calls from all sorts of people uh, about all sorts of things that they think are issues. Um, but this, this one in particular just stood out in my mind because I did get those calls in the morning. And we reported that to Republican headquarters who in turn called, I believe someone at, at the voter registration board and, and reported it. And I didn't hear any calls anymore that day. Uh, I had another voter from this precinct who said she showed up to vote at 9 a.m. that day. And she was told she had to vote provisional because she was no longer on the voting rolls. And Michael, I talked to you about this uh, issue before, and, and we can talk about that particular uh, issue later. And she had told me then that she was told when she was given a provisional ballot to vote with, which by the way, did not count because she was not registered as a voter. Uh, she was told then that there were, had already been 50 provisionals at that precinct, the Sotera North Precinct. I'm also well aware that that precinct was recently split into uh, North and South, and that many people may have wanted to show up there because that's where they, you know, a lot of people don't vote except in presidential elections. So maybe they showed up at the township building rather than in Sotera South. Uh, which is at the Bunker Hill Fire Company meeting, where, by the way, um, we don't see this um, discrepancy. Uh, and if, if, if it, anything at all, there's a discrepancy in fewer votes cast than actual voters. So I'm just trying to figure out, just get to the bottom of this one particular precinct, uh, because I had all those things all together, a voter who showed up who wasn't allowed to vote because he wasn't on the registration uh, rolls, a uh, number of calls from people who said the people in front of them weren't in the book and they were given a ballot, whether it was a provisional or an actual ballot to be scanned, not sure. And because of this distinct deviation in this analysis, whether you believe the analysis is accurate or not. So I, the reason that I wanted to reach out to you folks is because I have always had great faith in the people in Lebanon County to count the votes accurately. I, I'm not questioning that at all. What I'm questioning maybe is the methodology of how that data does in fact get uploaded to the SURE system because clearly the vast majority of Lubbock County's data is already up there. So, is it, so I guess I'm assuming that's done in kind of a batch file uh, immediately after election day and then maybe you have to go through and do a little cleanup afterwards. I think what I'm really trying to get to the bottom of is what is the process of matching votes cast and counted to matching the number of voters who vote? Because I know that this election cycle was a bit more convoluted than previously. Previously, we used to send all the absentee ballots out to the precinct and they would count them there. Now we're having all the absentee ballots and the mail ballots come to a central location. So it's not the people at the precinct on election day who are doing that tabulation to reconcile the numbers of votes cast and counted to the number of voters. So I just wanted to explore that a little bit with the board. And, and again, I'll reiterate what I said in my letter. I've always had great faith in the great, you know, the folks in Lebanon County who conduct our election, to the volunteers who are out there, the, the, the judges of elections. So I, I'm just curious about this deviation for all those reasons. I, and I just wanted to have a discussion about it. All right. I think uh, Michael is prepared uh, to answer this because uh, we, he and I had some discussion uh, after you uh, forwarded your, your questions and your concerns, Russ. And we do appreciate uh, 
the uh, positive nature of, of your presentation because we feel also uh, that we do the best job humanly possible. And I want to give Michael a great deal of credit for delivering during this uh, general election uh, much better than uh, other counties across the state. Uh, he indicated to us that we were going to have the mail-in ballots counted by the end of the day uh, on election day, and pretty much uh, he delivered on that. So, Michael, if you want to share your uh, your explanations, I'm sure we can put uh, 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 Mr. Diamond's concerns to rest. Absolutely, and um, I, Representative, I want to make sure I wrote down, I want to make sure I cover all, all of the topics you brought up. So, um, first I have the reconciliation process uh, you wanted to explain between votes cast and um, uh, eventually then how they get in a short system. Uh, the other issue is the Soterra issue of um, number of voters um, showing higher um, than would be expected. And then third being how we enter everything into the short system. Did I get everything? Um, those the main? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, Sure. So first of all, I want to thank the board uh, for reappointing me this morning um, into my <laughs> position. So, so thank you for that. Um, second of all, uh, yeah, so basically uh, what happens in the reconciliation period for us to reconcile votes uh, cast, what we do is we go through every precinct um, during what we call canvassing um, or computation. Both, both um, are used. Uh, and uh, we will go through, and what happens is on election day, every precinct has something called a number list of voters. And we have um, manual paper poll books in Lebanon County. And so when a voter uh, comes in, um, they give the poll worker their name, they find them in the poll book, um, they have them signed by their name, and then we give them a number. Uh, that number uh, allows us to keep track of how many people have uh, been verified as a registered voter, then they go back into the voting area, given a ballot, fill out the ballot, and then they are scanned through the scanner. The scanner then tracks how many ballots are in each, um, each scanner, so it does a count. So what we do throughout the day is we do a verification of the number of people that are on that number list of voters um, to how many ballots are in that scanner. We do it, the judge of elections knows to do that throughout the day. We also have um, individuals called rovers. Uh, we have six of them that are, we split up our districts. Uh, they go out and they assist our judges uh, when they go in the morning and when they go in the afternoon, they are also responsible to check to make sure that that scanner number matches the number list of voters. If there's ever any discrepancy throughout the day, the judge of elections is responsible to let us know what that discrepancy is and they have a log that they can fill out. Uh, one I can tell you that happens is um, we'll have an individual that will come in and they will be a registered voter, they'll sign the book, they will get their ballot, uh, let's say they, they are frustrated, make a mistake, whatever it may be, this has happened before, where they will be told that the ballot won't scan because of X, Y, Z, um, and they'll get frustrated, and in, in times we've had people just rip up their ballot, throw it, and <laughs> leave. So there's nothing in the scanner. So then that's a discrepancy that the, that the judge of elections has to show that we actually have more people checked in than, than ballot scanned. It should never, ever, ever be the opposite way. Um, if there is, then they really need to let us know and why. Um, I can honestly say I have not seen that happen in my four years here. Um, so then what we do is they give all that data back to us. So they bring that back with all of their supplies. Obviously, election night, that's not anything we're doing. We're just posting results in the competition period. Um, that's when we're going through pulling all that information, looking at it. And then my staff and I goes through that precinct by precinct and we check the numbered list of voters to the number of ballots cast. We actually read that aloud in our computation meetings for the board um, where we will let them know how many the machine total is, how many we had on the number list of voters. And then we just, we explain any differences in what they may be. Um, the board probably remembers we had some times where the judge didn't give us an explanation. We had to contact them to find out um, what it would be. So that's for the reconciliation 
uh, as far as in-person voting, that's how that's done. As far as mail-in and absentee, we absolutely, we have the ballot and the, we have the envelope with the ballot inside. So we do, obviously, what we were doing upstairs was we had a form we had filled out that says there was, and I'll make it super easy, 100 ballots in, in First Ward East, excuse me, 100, 100 envelopes. And as we would open the envelopes, then we would have to have 100 ballots. And we had a form that we had filled out along the way that we were counting to make sure that that matched. And then when I got those to the scanner, um, then I, when I scanned those ballots, I made sure I had 100. And if I didn't, then I made any discrepancies. So some of the things that would occur with that was that, let's say we had a ballot that was not scannable. Uh, we had actually an individual that cut off all of the timing marks of the ballot for whatever reason. And so we just had the ballot itself, so it wouldn't read to a scanner. So we had to recreate that, but it, we don't do that at that time. So we would mark 99 scanned and the reason why, and then we would put that one ballot off to be recreated later. So that's how we'd reconcile the mail-in ballots. And then those two added together as our total ballots cast. Um, and then we would then, after all of that, then add in any provisional ballots. And provisional ballots are handled one by one by the board. So we make sure if someone is given a provisional ballot that that provisional ballot um, is valid, the individual is registered, they're registered in the right district, they're voting for the correct candidates, uh, for some, sometimes it could, uh, representative, it could be that somebody uh, thought they changed the registration, didn't. Um, so we only can count, let's say, statewide races or federal races, but we can't count your race because they never updated it. So the board makes that decision. We don't. But that's some of the things that we do with provisional ballots, and then they are added, at, added back in um, later. This is the first time the state has asked us to separate um, mail, mail in slash absentee together, election day and provisional as three different categories. So the way we handled that in our county is we did it as three different ballot styles, three different ballot types. So our system would know how to count them. Um, we had some growing pains with that, just in the fact that we had some judges that inadvertently, instead of using the provisional ballots we gave them, they went and grabbed election day ballots and scanned those and used those as their provisional ballots instead of the Actual And so what that did is it just skewed the categories a little bit. So we tried to catch those as we could during computation, but there, I'm, I'm guaranteed there were some that probably got through and counted wrong. Uh, and that's just a training learning thing that we'll talk about in our next, we do training before every election and that's something that we'll, we'll teach them. But of course, there was so much new stuff, as you know, with this election for the poll workers to grasp that, you know, our biggest thing was the number of ballots that we received matched the number of people that showed up. And that's how we do that reconciliation process. Um, and I'll kind of stop there, see if you have any questions on that, Representative. Does that make sense? No, yeah, that, that, that makes perfect sense. And, and, and it's good to have the public understand what that is as well. And, and just let me add that you, you mentioned a lot of new things. There's probably going to be a lot more new things too before the next one. Uh, I don't know if you were aware, we have a very, very aggressive hearing schedule for the state government committee. And, and I will look forward to working with you and getting your input on any changes we're gonna have to make to these systems to make them more efficient for you and, and better for you. Um, so so then once, once then you have all your precincts reconciled and you certify, I don't know if you certify your votes or you, I don't know, when does that get uploaded to shore and how has that happened? Yeah, so that's a manual process for us. So, um, and that's where I was talking about apples to oranges. So the reconciliation is what I just explained. Now, what, what you are looking at is what's entered in shore. And one of the things that the public and, and everybody should understand about the shore system, this has nothing to do, shore does not do anything with um, how ballots are cast or recorded. It has nothing to do with ballots. Shore is strictly registration of of all of the registered voters in the county um, and the information we have on them and then it also tracks voting history so what we do once the election uh, computation um, normally it's even probably once we're even certified is then what we do is we go back through and we have to look at every poll book and we have to scan in every record to give them credit 
And what happened with this election is that we not only have all the poll books to scan, but we also, also had all of those envelopes to scan, because that's how the mail-in absentee voters were given credit in the shore system and how people could track to see if we received their ballot. So we made a constant, well, I made the decision um, and I'll take responsibility for it if the board doesn't agree. But what we do is we start scanning all our poll books uh, we have multiple people that do it to get through them. Uh, it takes usually about two weeks, um, sometimes more. Um, sounds like Walmart or Target when you're in here those days because it's all those, you know, beeping. Um, and we scan all of those. And then what we do is we normally, in a normal election, we will run all of the reports and see how close we are to the ballots cast to how many people ensure receive credit. This year, we knew we were off. One of the main, re main reasons we were off is because how many apps, excuse me, how many provisional ballots we had. Provisional ballots caused us to be off because in some precincts, the judges, and I'm not placing blame, something very, very new. Um, some judges allowed people to sign the poll book, but gave them a provisional ballot, which was the correct procedure to give them a provisional ballot, but they should not have signed the poll book. So when we went through to try to give people credit through the poll book, and then also trying to give them credit because they were approved for a provisional ballot, that was an issue in the shore system because it was almost like twice. Um, and so we knew we were off of that because we, we had to go through almost and through every provisional ballot to make sure that it wasn't already given credit. So once we finished that process, process and we knew we were off, I made the decision that we had all of this information that was being held since the registration deadline, which occurred um, back in October, um, and all of the information people had given us, um, you know, on election day, obviously people can fill out changes and then online, you know, that's always still available. So we made the decision that what we were going to do is we knew we were going to slow down once we got to the holiday season. And I made the decision that what we needed to do before anyone went on vacation is we needed to process all of those changes because we had people calling us saying, I made this change. Where's my new card? Why isn't it in the system? Um, doing their due diligence to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do. And that, that's fine. So I'm like, we're going to make, we're going to certify our results so that we could open up the new, the, uh, the, um, the short system to make all these changes. And then what we can do, and we've done this, we do this all the time, actually, election through election is then we can go back and make any adjustments that we need to, to pick up any changes that we had for the previous election. Um, but sure, basically locks us out for a day when we do that. Um, so we made all those changes, got all the changes done. Once that was done, then we started printing the reconciliation by precinct and the ladies in the office started going through each poll book to make sure that when it was scanned, it was scanned correctly. And that's where we're going through to try to figure out where some of these adjustments are as far as the whole comparison between sure and the comparison to votes cast. And that's why, Representative, when you say, well, I believe that uh, Lebanon County certified, we did, because that's the reason why we did. But we, we know not with just saying, oh, we're off, I, you know, well, for us, it was, we're showing about 300. Uh, we're off 300 and yeah, it is what it is. No, we're going back and fixing that uh, or finding it. Because, like I said, it's a manual process. Got to make sure we've got all of those scanned. And the next thing, once we do all the poll books, is we're going to have to pull all of the um, envelopes um, and make sure we scanned all of those correctly. Because my guess is that's where probably some of them are, just because of the sheer number we got in at one time and going through those and organizing those and making sure we got them counted. The scanning part um, was all new to us. And we did have some people helping with that that don't always do it so my guess is that's where some of that is too but we're going to reconcile it that that's just part we have to do and we're doing it now we gotten through um i'm gonna say maybe 15 to 20 precincts already um and we're running we're going through each even if it's off one we're going to check it and we're going to try it because it's important those people get credit for voting but that's what it is credit for voting um now with Swatera. You brought that up and I wanted to touch base on that real quick is 
one of the things that, and you brought it up, what happened was that we had uh, split five districts. Um, so Swatera was one of them. Uh, the other one you mentioned was 31 North. So that was um, South Londonderry. South Londonderry, yeah. Yeah, and so those are two that were split. And so what we found that happened was that we did have individuals, the last time they voted, they, they voted to swear to swear Swatera Township building. Um, and so they went there and they really should have been at Bunker Hill. What happens then is you're right, the individual that was behind them probably would have saw they weren't in the poll book and they were given a ballot, but they were given a provisional ballot. Um, and then what we did with those provisional ballots is we checked to make sure they didn't go down and vote in Swatera South or anywhere else. And then we presented to the board to say this individual was just at the wrong precinct. It's exact same ballot that they would have received at Swatera South. And we, we, our recommendation to the board was to count all of it and the board um, did. And so they would count it, but where it gets counted is in Swatera North because that's the ballot they received even though they're registered in Swatera South. So there's no way to go back and have that. So you're looking, hey, the registered in Swatera South, why is North have more than what they should? And it's that exact reason because the ballot that was counted, it's exactly the same ballot, but the ballot that was counted was counted up in north. Um, and you're gonna have that happen throughout Jackson um, for, the, for the places that it happened the most. You know, Jackson, we talked about South and, uh, excuse me, South Londonderry, uh, was Cornwall was gonna be another one. So any of those into places where people have not yet voted with the split, which was done in 18, 2018, um, voted for the first time, that could have happened because we would have asked them to go down to the, their correct precinct, but by law, if you present yourself as a voter at a precinct, um, we have to allow you to vote. And that, that process is through a provisional ballot. Does that answer yeah. that question? Yeah, you, you've answered a lot of my questions and, and I really do appreciate it. And I, I have to get off and, and go to another um, a conference call here. Uh, but I just wanted to ask you uh, once more, I, I spoke with that voter that we talked about whose yes. record got merged. And she had not heard anything yet from you. She, she reached out to me and was concerned. So if, if you could uh, follow up with her, I would really appreciate that. And uh, again, thank you, ever, Thank you, board members, uh, for the job you've done in this very, very challenging year. Um, uh, I know it's tough work. And I know we, at the state level, didn't make it much easier for you. Uh, we look to make it much easier for you as we go on. Uh, pro, uh, and I'm going to hold that to you. I'm going to hold you to that, Representative. I'm going to do my best, Michael. I am. So thank you so much. Uh, you really helped me out today, and I, I truly appreciate it. So have a great day, okay? One, one last thing, uh, uh, Representative. Yeah. Uh, Michael mentioned this to me, and I'm going to bring it up to you. One of the things that would uh, shorten this process is if the state would uh, provide us funding uh, each county for electronic poll books rather than than uh, the, the, the handwritten books that we deal with now. Well, my so response we immediately that. to that would be, A, we have to get those funds somewhere. And a lot of people have been out of work, so funds are short at the state level this year. The other thing is we're going to have to get over. People have a thing about electronic stuff when it comes to voting right now, so we're going to have to get them over that as well. But we will look forward to all discussing all these issues in depth with Michael and with you, the board, um, as we as we pursue this path before May, okay? okay thank you so much. Question. Yes, thank you so much. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to point out that <laughs> we, with our voting systems, moved to paper ballots so we would have a written record. With the poll books, we have already a paper trail and a written record. So there are positives to using that system. But I did want to give credit and say our team in voter registration, the dozens of poll workers at our precincts, as well as the dozens more of volunteers who came in and helped us count the ballots were fair and impartial, and they deserve our thanks, respect, and trust. And I wanna say thank you to everyone who made our election fair, equitable, on time, and I think that we can be proud of our team and our people, and um, they, their, their ethics are above board, 
and I, I just can't say enough positive about everyone involved. Thank you for listening. I concur. Thank you to Liberty County. All right. Anything else? All right. Representative, thank you for coming in. And, uh, you know, we have an open door here and you know that already. So uh, appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. You are welcome. Hopefully like that cleared up any, uh, and, and, you know, one of the things I do want to make very clear is, is I'm always available to ask questions. Uh, I, I mean, I understand the period in time that we are at. Um, I, I, you know, I don't really want to get into it much, but, you know, I, I did find out about just some of the issues why I was on vacation because the deputy secretary of state called me at home to tell me that there's these tweets about our numbers being off. And, you know, that's really not the way I would love to be able to do it. I'm, I'm fine with being transparent. And if we need to have the meeting, that's great. But um, really would love to make sure everybody knows that if there's questions, especially our representatives or, or our state senator, um, feel free to, to contact me. You know, I'm always available and open to, to discuss any of these issues with anybody um, and uh, want to explain. And I'm very much try to be transparent, as you know, by our meeting just the other day with the risk limited audit. Um, you know, I'm here, I'll answer any question, explain anything and why we do certain things. And obviously I'm always open to, to bettering any procedure that we need to do. But uh, I just wanna make sure that's clear because I think that's the best way to go. And then if we should have a meeting for everybody to know, that would be great. Um, that, that's just where I am with that, so. Well, I think, I think you know that our comfort level uh, with the process and as Commissioner Litz so aptly pointed out with the people that, that help make it happen. Uh, you know, we, we certainly uh, appreciate your efforts and uh, uh, we, we can't say enough for, I mean, you, you, you have delivered uh, in a difficult situation and there are places that we can point to that, that uh, that's not the case necessarily, so. Thank you. Very good. I, I yep. saw there was a chat. I don't know if that individual needed to ask. You have a raised hand. Bill Doherty has a raised hand in the audience. Okay. You want to bring them in? Go Bill, ahead. you, yep. Good morning. Still morning? He's on, he's on mute. There we go. There hey, you are. Uh, hey, thank you for allowing me to just, uh, calling uh, commissioners and uh, Jamie and Michael. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I just wanted to uh, echo Representative Ryan's, uh, or Representative Diamond's uh, statement on, um, Michael, you did a great job under the circumstances, your, your staff, your office. And I just wanna thank you for um, fulfilling my, my inquir inquiries and uh, my curiosity and I know it was uh, some uh, difficult times and you were busy and I really appreciate uh, you know, the, the feedback that you gave me and look forward to uh, continuing if I have any other questions. Uh, Sounds good. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Bill. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you board. Very, thank you for your support. Good. I do appreciate it. All right, and I need a motion uh, to adjourn the Board of Elections. Bill, before we adjourn, may I just make one comment? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. I, I just, seriously, I, you know, this has kind of been overlooked a little bit. Um, a lot of accolades, you know, flowing toward Michael and his team and the volunteers. But I, one of the unsung heroes in this thing has been Commissioner Ames uh, with the steady hand as chairman of this uh, committee during this whole, uh, you know, very challenging uh, election cycle. So I, I just wanted a, a tip of the hat to Bill for... Uh, a good steady job and, and getting us through a lot of the uh, unknown uh, areas that we've uh, had to deal with a, as they came up. So I, I appreciate your uh, being on top of those and, and handling them very uh, in a dignified fashion. Thank you. As not, someone nece has, not necessary, but I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. As someone that has felt that steady hand, um, yes, I, I concur. A little humor for you there, Commissioner. You guys are too kind. <laughs> All right, well, let's finalize the adjournment here then. Uh, moved. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second to adjourn the Board of Elections. We stand adjourned until the next time. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> All right, Jamie, we'll reconvene.
Don't forget to unmute, Jamie. 